Oh my gosh, you guys, I have been waiting well over a week to do this review. I am so late by my standards. You guys know I'm pretty quick to get my reviews out. But I'm finally sitting here to do a wear test of the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Foundation. I think of all the launches so far in 2022, this has been the one I've been the most excited about. I've been waiting for Charlotte Tilbury to launch a new complexion product. So I would like her to launch a new concealer because she needs a new concealer. But I'm so excited about this new new foundation and curiosity has killed the cat. I normally don't watch reviews before I make my own review but I am a YouTube viewer just like you guys. I had to know with this foundation so I got excited but I actually did try this yesterday and I have to like admit you guys kind of made my skin look dry. But today I'm making sure I'm using all products that I love and that I'm familiar with. See how this reacts. Try different styles of application as well. I'm really excited. If you want to see my thoughts on this, just keep watching. I mean, I know you've gotten your ear talked off probably already by this foundation. Everybody's done the review and I'm joining in because I have to because I love Charlotte Tilbury. I want to film a review too. Really excited to see that she came out with a foundation like this because this is exactly what I feel like her line needed. She has a full full coverage foundation and then she has like normal foundations and she also has really glowy foundations but we haven't gotten like a skin tint Esque. I know this has more coverage than a skin tint, but you know, that hydrated, almost like a tinted moisture, I don't know. Something that's skin-like, natural, still gives a little bit of coverage glowy on the skin. We didn't have a product like that yet from Charlotte, and that's kind of what her brand embodies. Dang, it says skin looks more radiant by up to 285%. It's supposed to give you a healthy, natural, everyday skin look. They say online it has a medium coverage and it's supposed to be really hydrating, plump, smoothing, brightening, all these things. Long lasting 16 hour wear. That's a big claim for a hydrating foundation. Right, I'm excited. And like most of the Charlotte Tilbury products, there are some skincare benefits within this product as well. So this is $44. The range looks decent. There's 30 shades and for a lighter to medium coverage product, I don't think that that's bad. Now I picked up the shade 4N. I was worried. I saw that this ran a little bit orange or dark. So I almost picked up 2N after I ordered 4N. You don't need to do that if you use me as a skin tone match. 4N is literally perfect. Okay, I was worried, but it looks great on my skin. I would say I am normally like a 4N or 5N in the summer from Charlotte Tilbury, but I was a little skeptical because sometimes I use Michelle Wong as a skin tone match, but she got 2N in this and that's definitely way too light on me. She's a little lighter than me, but I don't know. 4N is my shade. So here is what the box looks like, and then you can read all the claims on here. It's very, very wordy. As I stated before, you can order this foundation pretty much everywhere now. Sephora, Beautylish, Charlotte Tilbury, all the places. And it has this pump style, like the Estee Lauder foundation that I love. There's a lot of foundations that I love that have this style of packaging, and they all tend to be within the same kind of claims, you know? But really cute, I like it, goes with her brand. So this has a 12 month shelf life. There is one fluid ounce, which is very, very standard for foundation, so that's great. And it's made in Italy. Okay, let's get to application here. I'm gonna shake it up. Now I did, I said this before, I did use this yesterday. I filmed a video, well I filmed two videos yesterday. The first video I filmed, I just applied it, but it was like a full face of brand, brand new products and my face looks super dry. I just took it off because I had to film a second video and I actually did wear this for some time. Again, I felt like my skin looked a little more dry as well, but today I really want to make sure I'm using reliable products and prepping my skin and I just thought that that was odd. So we'll see today. I've prepped my skin with the Suwasu Concentrated Ginseng Renewing Cream. This is really nice and hydrating for my skin. Let's get to application. So take a look at my bare skin before. You can see I have some acne scarring but it's pretty flat everything is looking good with my skin but we do have some acne scarring to cover and for reference I do have normal to dry skin it is currently leaning more on the dry side given that it is winter so let's take a look at the consistency here 
So it's not really liquidy, as you can see. It's barely, barely drooping. It's not too thick of a consistency, but it's not like a water light foundation that just like spills like a cup of water down your arm. So I'm gonna start off by putting it directly on my acne. I'm going to use a brush on this side and then I'm going to use a sponge on the other side. Yesterday I only used sponge so I actually was kind of impressed with the coverage. I was expecting something lighter but it definitely gave me a true medium coverage which is more than I was expecting for this style of product. But I'm taking my Refer number 31 brush. This is one of my favorite foundation brushes. I'll link it down for you guys. It doesn't leave any streaks. I normally do not like foundation brushes. This is one that I really really enjoy so I'm just gonna pat it over my acne scarring so that you can see how it looks. So see it does give that nice medium coverage. Let me apply it to the rest of my face. This is giving me uneven uh there we go, pumps. Okay, so I'm gonna spread it out along my forehead, along the cheek area, which has, for me, a lot of redness. I would say you can probably get decent coverage for about two pumps on the whole face. Okay, so I'm gonna use that brush to blend it out. I like that I don't need to use too much swiping motions. I was worried because this is on the thicker side as opposed to watery, but it's spreading out just fine. Patting motions with the brush. I used the e.l.f. Power Grip Primer yesterday and this foundation would not move. I was like, this is so thick. I can't blend it out. I can confirm it was the primer and <laughs> not the foundation. This is actually spreading pretty good. You see? What a great color match. Okay, let's try the sponge side now, which is typically my preferred method of application. I'm using a Shop Miss AOA sponge. Generally, I would say use less product, but I feel like it does look a little bit more healthy and natural with the sponge. However, you are foregoing a little bit of coverage when you do that. So for me, I'm more of a sponge girl. I'm gonna like how this looks more with a sponge because it's gonna look more natural. But for everyday application, what I would probably do is use a sponge everywhere to apply. And then I will use the brush afterwards with a little extra product on the areas that I need more coverage, which for me obviously would be the acne scarring. But here is with the first layer. It looks super natural on the sponge side. And then we definitely got a little bit more thickness and coverage on the skin with the brush. So if you want more coverage, I mean, this is typically how it goes. The brush is going to give it to you. I just think for me, when I am reaching for a foundation this style, typically I know I'm looking for something that doesn't have a maximum amount of coverage. I want my skin to look natural and glowy. But without any products over top, you can see that it is quite glowy. It looks really beautiful and natural. I would definitely want to powder the t-zone if anything if I wanted to keep that glow just because we're looking a little sweaty right here but other than that it is a really beautiful healthy and natural glow to the skin and this is where I love the product. I think it looks fantastic. I'm going to apply like a half squirt on my cap and let's see how it builds. So I'm gonna put a little extra on my cheek here. Let's see if we can build the coverage a little bit. Oh yeah, you absolutely can. It's never ever going to build up to a full coverage, but if you have an area on your face that maybe has a little extra redness or some blemishes, adding a second coat is going to help camouflage. It's not going to completely make it disappear most likely because you can still see my freckles through, which I love this kind of finish, but it definitely evens everything out when it comes to the complexion. Okay, something that I actually do want to add now that I'm close up to my skin, you'll see because it is glowy, it really isn't smoothing the pores or anything of my face without any powder or anything over top. You can see a little bit of the pores, but honestly, it's not unflattering. Like I don't look at it and go, oh, my skin looks terrible. That's not the case. If you put something glowy on your skin, it most likely is is going to do this so it doesn't look bad but just be warned that it doesn't really I feel follow those claims of like literally smoothing or blurring the skin. All right I'm going to uh, fast forward through this process if you want to see what I'm using for the rest of my face and complexion. I
so I just finished all of my makeup and here is what the skin is looking like and I just I feel like the second powder hits this it looks a lot more heavy and dry on my skin I don't understand I feel like this is a product that I feel will look the most beautiful on my skin with little to no powder like just a touch on the t-zone area I didn't do a ton of powder but I did my regular powder routine which was a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury translucent powder just to set the under eyes the t-zone and then I went in with the touch of the airbrush flawless setting powder just to smooth my pores a little bit just on the areas that are a little bit more porous and in those areas the foundation just looks a little heavier it doesn't look quite blended into the skin it looks a little bit drier so the day is young we will see how it wears because a lot of times with foundation as the day goes on oils come through things look more natural i will say i was hopeful for that yesterday and it didn't look the greatest it didn't smooth out and hydrate like I wanted it to. We will see since I'm a little bit more familiar with the other products that I'm using today, but here's how it looks. Right now I'm just getting those vibes that this is a foundation that is going to need to be used with like no powder because it looks stunning with no powder but it looks a bit heavy it doesn't look bad though i don't want you to think i think the foundation looks bad i take a step back i look fine but close up to a mirror just analyzing it it looks a little dry and then one thing i also did want to test i let a little bit of foundation dry on my hand you can see how perfect that is i just want to see the level of oxidation i did put a little pump so here is dry versus wet. Honestly, it got like a touch more peachy, but it didn't really get darker in tone or anything. So on my skin, I don't really notice it. It's not bad. There's some foundations where it gets like dark and you look like an orange. Um, I don't feel that way with this, but there is a subtle oxidation there. So I'm going to update you in a few hours. Okay, and in case you wanted to see, I'm using all natural light right now and the back of my iPhone camera. And again, here's a closer look. Okay, so I wanted to do a quick check-in. It's officially been about four hours since I initially applied the foundation. I had some breakfast and I spent the whole entire afternoon filming, but I want you to get a closer look. And you guys, I am not, I'm not jiving with this foundation. I don't, my expectations were really high. I know a lot of people are loving this foundation, but I just feel like it's not doing my skin too many favors. So you can see it kind of breaking up around my nose area and it's only four hours in. It's looking a little crusty down there and I just feel like my skin looks dry. And the first two times I applied this foundation, I was like, okay, it definitely has to be the corresponding products that I'm using. But today I used my normal favorite powders that never make my skin look dry and they were Charlotte Tilbury powders no less they should work with this foundation and my skin still looks heavy and dry and not hydrated <laughs> I don't know okay I mean I'm getting the feeling that I might like this foundation if I just like don't set it which is not what I like to do I like to set with a little bit of powder maybe like a tiny bit of powder would be okay but it maybe just be a might be a quick I don't know I'm not loving it that's all I can say right now. You can see it. Now my oils look good. I don't see any oils coming through. None of that. From afar, it looks fine. But up close, it just doesn't look as smooth or hydrated as I expected it to look. But anyways, I will catch you in a few hours. I'm going to walk on my treadmill, kind of put it through a little bit of wear and tear, and we'll reevaluate where we're at. Until then, folks. Holy. Okay, guys, it is like six o'clock, so I've been wearing the foundation for about eight and a half hours now i have some thoughts now we're looking a little extra glowy right now because i have all studio lights and no natural lights since it's dark out so we're looking a little more oily than in all real life but i don't love this foundation i'm really really sad i don't dislike it though okay hear me out arguably this is the best the foundations looked all day because minus the oils it actually looks like the foundation is settled it doesn't look dry or thick where the powder was applied but do you see how textured the center of my face looks like right around here it's completely broken up it already started breaking up in the 
four hour mark, which normally my foundation looks pretty flawless at that point because I have drier skin. I don't, I don't get oily. So that was the first red flag where I was like, oh no, and it just it's slowly fading away around here and it just looks really really textured and oiled up in this area the outskirts of my face look pretty good still it's not terrible it's not the worst foundation i've used i don't want you guys to think that but i just i i just don't love the way this foundation sits on my skin personally now i do want to touch up just so we can see i don't want to add any additional powder because powder and this foundation on my skin do not agree but i'm taking this refer brush which i used to set earlier i'm not putting any additional powder on it it's just where it was and i want to pat and see if this does anything hopefully this yeah that kind of helped with the oiliness a little bit you will see it's kind of going into my smile lines, but not really. Like, this is the deepest smile line that I have. It's not sinking in bad. So here's where I stand with this. I would use this foundation on cream days. On <laughs> days, I, I will wear this a lot in the winter because that's when my skin is the driest. And I will not set this foundation with powder. It's going to be the day where I'm wearing all cream products because powder with this foundation just disagree on my face. It's very, very odd. It looks thicker. It looks drier. I don't really like that. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking for a foundation at a similar price point that has the same give or take capabilities, medium coverage, glowy complexion, I'm a big fan of the Estee Lauder Futurist Hydra Rescue Moisturizing Makeup. These pretty much have the same claims. I like the Estee Lauder better. It sits prettier on my skin. So that's my review. I give it a solid like 6 out of 10. I've tried some other foundations recently that quite frankly I've been a lot more happy with. And I'm being super duper dramatic. You guys know how I am. It's really not that bad. Nobody's looking that close to my face. If I wear this out, I would look fine. <laughs> Nobody's gonna be like, ew, your face. <laughs> the foundation looks good from afar, but being up close, just not the best on the market. So I hope you guys enjoyed this foundation review and found it helpful. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.